Good morning, everybody. So my name is Dan Godfrey. I'm uh, one of the specialist advisors in the university's research uh, and innovation division. And uh, Tim's asked me to spend the next 10 minutes introducing Horizon 20. It's quite a, quite a tall order, um, but it's the start of a, of a rapid program. So hold on tight. So brief introduction to, to Horizon 2020. And then uh, rather than go into depth in, in any of the societal challenges, I'm going to point you in the direction of where to find more information about all of the, uh, the relevant calls and competitions. So Horizon 2020. As Tim said, the EU's new funding instrument for research and innovation from 2014 to 2020. Uh, its overarching priority, exiting the economic crisis uh, through sustainable growth. It's being seen as an instrument for growth and jobs by the EU, uh, coupling research to innovation, uh, impact being a key component, so far more focus, as you can see, uh, than in FP7 on industrial engagement and on innovation and linking research to innovation uh, and impact. A significant investment also in excellent research, so uh, one of the pillars um, within Horizon 2020 uh, is excellent research. Uh, the European Research Council in particular receiving um, a significant increase in its budget to support excellent research. But today we're focusing on the societal challenges pillar. I'll uh, say a bit more about the structure in just a second. Budget of 70.2 billion, 8 billion to be spent in 2014. and. An underlying focus on, uh, on societal challenges that the EU is facing, uh, and as Tim said, the whole programme today is structured around those societal challenges. Horizon 2020 is open to uh, academia, industry and stakeholders. Simple reimbursement rates for all, so it's a, it's a lot more straightforward to engage uh, with Horizon 2020 than, than FP7 and previous programmes, which is great. Two-year work programmes being issued, uh, so 2014 to 2015 is available at the moment. And basically that describes all of the competi competitions and calls uh, over that period. So straight away you can get involved in looking at what's available over the next two years uh, and thinking about um, what sort of applications you're going to put together. Challenge-based, aiming to allow freedom uh, to come up with innovative solutions. Fewer topics, uh, but broader and, and more open, less prescriptive. A number of cross-cutting issues embedded as well. Uh, they don't appear in every call and competition, but they're there running through many social sciences, uh, gender and international cooperation being three to mention. So this is the structure. Uh, three pillars, excellent science, industrial leadership and societal challenges. Societal challenges being our focus today. And this is just a breakdown uh, of the total funding available at, through Horizon 2020 in each of these different societal challenges. Uh, ranging from 6.6 .6 billion for the health demographic and well-being pillar to um, inclusive uh, 1.2 billion for inclusive, innovative and uh, reflective societies. But a big chunk of the budget, the biggest uh, of the three pillars, 39% of the total budget, uh, 27 billion in total. There are three main types of action within the societal challenges pillar. Research and innovation actions, uh, innovation actions and coordination and support actions. Research and innovation, more about new knowledge uh, and, and new re basic research or research more at the basic end of the spectrum. Uh, innovation actions is more about uh, commercialization and uh, product testing and development, um, more at the applied research end of the spectrum. And then coordination and support actions uh, is more about the dissemination of research, um, policy dialogue and communication, those kind of activities. Different, uh, different funding rates, and I'll move on to a slide on that in just a second, different eligibility, eligibility requirements as well. Um, research and innovation actions and the innovation actions both require three legal entities uh, to apply as a, as a consortia. Uh, coordination and support actions you can apply just as a, as a single um, entity. And when we're talking about entities, we're talking about member states and associated countries. So just very briefly on the funding, um, as I said, it's a, a fairly straightforward mechanism. So basically, it's 100% of your direct costs and 25% of indirect costs. Uh, doesn't matter who you are, um, whether you're academic or, or industry. Uh, or another stakeholder. The only exception really being within the, the innovation actions, uh, because they're closer to market, industry reimbursement is dropped to 70% for the direct costs. Um, 
So just in terms of keeping up to date with, with new calls, uh, the route to accessing the definitive information about, about new calls, about the, the deadlines and when they're, they're again, what the budgets will be, is through the work, work programme documents. Uh, these are available on the, the Horizon 2020 website. I've got some screenshots, so I'll talk you through uh, how to reach those in, in a second. Uh, if you're a university employee, you can also access them through the uh, R&I website, and I'll show you that briefly as well. Um, again, if you're a university employee, uh, you can sign up with Research Professional. It's a service that the university subscribes to, and uh, anybody within the university can <coughs> register on that for free. It's a fantastic tool. It's a, a database, basically, of all funding opportunities, well, a, a huge number of um, funding opportunities globally, and it's very easy to tailor a, uh, an email alert um, to receive once a week to hear about new things. But in terms of Horizon 2020, much better to get familiar with the work programme so that you know what's coming um, a long way in advance. So, if you stick Horizon 2020 into Google, hit the top link, this is the page that you'll see. Uh, this front part of the website is very easy to navigate, and it's uh, uh, worth getting familiar with. If you click on the Horizon 2020 box, highlighted in red, um, it'll take you through to a page like this. Scroll down, and you're probably not going to see that, but within that box that I've highlighted as number one, it says societal challenges, so there's seven challenges listed there. Click on the one that you're interested in, and on the next page you'll see a, a button that says Work Programme. If you click on that, you'll get the PDF document, which is the, the work programme for that societal challenge. And as I said, that describes the calls and competitions, um, what impact they're expecting to see, uh, and deadlines and, and budgets for those calls as well. Any specific requirements and, uh, associated with them. This is the, uh, the university's website. If you, if you follow research, click on um, uh, get a research in the drop down from research and expertise, and uh, then click on supporting research and applying for research funding. You'll come through to the RI web pages, and the, uh, the 2020 work programmes are available through there as well. Um, probably easier just to go through the Horizon 2020 website, if I'm honest. The participant portal is the uh, single online system for accessing call documents and making your submissions. It's a good tool. We've, we've been using it over the last few months since the first calls were announced, um, and it works well. Uh, it takes a little while to, to familiarise yourself with it and find uh, where all of the different documents are. So I would suggest that if you're at all interested in Horizon 2020, and hopefully you are, as you're here, um, get registered on the participant portal as soon as possible and start becoming familiar with where you can find the documents and, and how you start a new proposal. Uh, you can create um, dummy proposals, so if you, or, you know, create a proposal and just label it as a, a test. So if you want to see what sort of documents you're being uh, asked to complete for a particular call, then that's one way of doing it. There are also uh, generic templates available um, from the website as well. Accessing the participant portal, uh, if you go uh, that main page again for the Horizon 2020 website, um, click on how to get funding, that'll take you through to the next page and uh, click on the participant portal link and you'll be prompted to register. There's no institutional approval step for this so it's easy to set it up and, and get going straight away um, by yourself. That's my last slide Tim.